Hi, I'm Dr. Gil Welch. In this short take, we're going to talk about p-values. Whoa! Statistics are typically viewed as the most intimidating topic in research. Today, the focus is on understanding what p-values mean, not where they come from. Let's talk about fancy words. You might call them Saks Fifth Avenue words. Then, of course, they're regular words. Let's call them Walmart words. In medicine, we have lots of fancy words. A myocardial infarction. That's a fancy word for a heart attack. Syncope. That's a fancy word for passing out. Torticollis. That's a fancy word for neck spasm. And ADD with motivational disorder. That's a fancy word for teenager. The same's true in statistics. P-value is a fancy word. I'd like you to think of it as the role of chance. And the phrase statistically significant, I'd like you to think of as being unlikely to be due to chance. Imagine a study that compared patients taking a drug called finasteride to patients taking sugar pills or placebos. You followed the patients over a year and at the end of the year, you count the change in PSA. PSA stands for prostate-specific antigen. But think of it as just any continuous variable. If you're a physicist, you can think about temperature. If you're an economist, you can think about the rate of return. A year later, patients in the finasterides group had an increase in their PSA of one point. You do the same thing in the placebo group, and you find that their PSA increased on average three points. Now you calculate the effect size. And we'd say here, on average, the PSA of patients taking finasteride rose two points less than those taking placebo. Now, here's the question. Might this difference be observed simply due to chance? Consider the role of chance. Differences are expected. Two groups almost never have exactly the same mean. Relative risks are almost never exactly one. One of the fundamental roles of statistics is to determine the probability that an observed difference is due to chance. That brings us to the p-value. The formal definition of a p-value is this, the probability of observing a difference as extreme or more extreme if the null hypothesis is true, namely that the two groups were randomly drawn from the same population. Now the working definition is the probability the observed difference is due to chance. Now that gives some statisticians fits but I think it's a reasonable working definition. P-values are probabilities and thus range from 0 to 1. A high p-value means it is likely that the observed difference is due to chance. A low p-value means it is unlikely the observed difference is due to chance. Now this is the most important side it tells you our definition of statistically significant. If the p-value is less than 0.05, less than 5%, our language is the result is statistically significant. If the p-value is greater than or equal to 0.05, or 5%, our language is there is no significant difference. Here's how we interpret it. A p-value of less than 5%, we say the observed difference is not due to chance. A p-value greater than or equal to 5%, we say the observed difference is due to chance. Now you try. Patients in the control group required more cataract surgery than those in the intervention group. 15% versus 8%. P equals 0.01. Is that statistically significant or due to chance? It's statistically significant. Why? 
because the p-value is less than 0.05. Patients taking Maxol had a higher risk of developing colonic adenomas than did patients in the placebo group. Relative risk 1.4, p equals 0 0.20. Is that statistically significant or due to chance? Well, that's due to chance. Why? Because the p-value is greater than 0 0.05. So here are the things you should know. First, differences among two groups are the norm. Second, the p-value is the probability that an observed difference is due to chance. Third, if the probability that an observed difference is due to chance is 5% or greater, we say it is due to chance. And fourth, if the probability that an observed difference is due to chance is less than 5%, we say it is not due to chance, i.e. it is statistically significant. Time for a couple of more advanced points. One more time. Women with breast cancer on a low-fat diet for five years developed fewer cases of recurrent breast cancer, 98 versus 124 cases per thousand, P equals 0.03. Statistically significant or due to chance? Well, that's easy. It's less than 5%, so it's statistically significant. But now let me change this. Women without breast cancer on a low-fat diet for five years developed fewer cases of breast cancer. 20 versus 22 cases per thousand, P equals 0 0.07. Is that statistically significant or due to chance? It's due to chance, because the p-value is greater than or equal to 0.05. But you might be a little uncomfortable with that. Why is that? Because there's a spectrum between due to chance and statistically significant. We have an arbitrary rule. The cutoff is p equals 0.05. But you should know there's a gray zone. 0 0.07, 0 0.03, they're pretty close. And that leads us to our advanced point. The 5% cutoff is an arbitrary convention. There are no theories or data to support it. So p-values near 0 0.05 should be interpreted cautiously. One more point. Large samples make small effects statistically significant. Imagine a study like this. 50% of the patients who are not receiving therapy nonetheless recover. Among those patients taking therapy, 75% recover. That's a pretty beneficial effect. But there are only 20 patients in each group. The p-value? it's going to be large, 0 0.10. It's not statistically significant, yet it is a promising therapy. Now in study B, patients without therapy, 50% still recover. But in patients taking therapy, 52% recover. That's a small effect. But if there are 10,000 patients in each group, the p-value will be highly significant. It'll be 0 0.005. And yet that's not a very big effect, particularly if there are any side effects from therapy. So the lesson here is, don't confuse statistical significance with clinical importance. And that brings us to the last advanced point. Big samples tend to have statistically significant differences. But that doesn't mean the findings are clinically important. All right, one final caution. A conclusion based on a study with an extremely low p-value, highly significant, can nonetheless be wrong. In all studies, the focus may be on the wrong patients or the wrong outcome. 
and in observational studies, the relationship may be confounded by a third variable. That's why epidemiology is so important. I hope this helps.